And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet in the temple. We have the man taking over all of your enemy under under a pair of star-shaped sunglasses. And guiding you through all your VTubers, good brother Shades. And we have the we have a newcomer into into uh, into our whole list of brotherhoods, the the one and only good brother Adifos. I'm hoping I got that pronounced right. Yes. So, it is it is August first. Um, try saying try saying that five times fast. Also, real quick, Monk, since uh, after that botch, I gotta hit this on ya. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> I, um, I deserve that. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna contest that one bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, after, after a, after a week's, after a week's vacation and, and doing my usual routine of cursing out um the the um a, the airline well, that and that and the fact that I get that I was consistently inconsistent regarding what got checked on um TSA cuz when I was when I was flying out they flagged my hat they thought because of the fact that I folded up my hat in my bag they thought it was something organic <laughs> Yeah, they do that a lot. On the way, I had a buddy, I had a buddy of mine that would always get pulled over by TSA because he looked "quote unquote" suspicious because <laughs> he had long blonde hair. So it's TSA. Um, you know, I, I should I should file a complaint to TSA claiming that they're racist for flagging a black man twice. <laughs> <laughs> do it, but. And of and of course I um I'm on I'm honestly debating whether or not I'm actually whether or not I'm just gonna bite the bullet and pay extra for the emergency exit seat because I'm not pay, I'm not paying for first class but God yeah. God knows I, God knows I need to do something when it comes to actually getting some leg room so I can read my damn book <laughs> that or, guy like you no surprise there. Or maybe maybe I'll just maybe I'll just say screw it and not fly American next time and next and fly Delta. Um, Southwest, I mean, bro. <laughs> Southwest in Minnesota. Oh no, not happening. Never mind. <laughs> Mildred, if it's okay with you, I would like to go ahead and plug in uh, my my content if anybody's hold, hold interested. That, hold that for the end. Yes, yeah. sir. But for the for this for, for this particular instance. We're co we have something we have something a, a little bit in the category of weeb shit, and also something that is a punching bag of weebs everywhere. Uh oh, <laughs> because this week we have Dead on Arrival live action anime. <laughs> and Adipose, to give you a little bit of why I'm here, because this is kind of my wheelhouse. I'm an anime reviewer on YouTube, so. Oh yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. So, so I is, do. Video games, mm -hmm. so this is gonna be really interesting. It's gonna be a, uh, it's gonna be foreign territory. Well, I'll, I'll help guide you through because this is my, this is my bread and butter right here. And uh, oh, I've seen more than my fair share of live action animes, and I've also learned to avoid a lot of them. Okay, we may as, we may as well start with the beginnings. So, Shades, what would you say was your first um, experience with the, with the live action experiment? <laughs> Actually, I started off on a high note because, as uh, to the best of my recollection, the first live action anime I ever or live action anime adaptation I ever watched was the 2006 Death Note movies. Yeah, yeah. Which um, I I know I know when some people hear live action Death Note, they end up doing the Homer scream because of the god 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 fucking awful. Um, Netflix adaptation from a couple of years ago. That is not Death Note. I don't care what anyone says. That is not fucking Death Note. No. Uh, <laughs> but 
the but the the two the mid two thousands trilogy, which for some which for some reason had had in one of its trailers a Red Hot Chili Peppers song, which is weird flex, but okay. Yeah, um, that's our benchmark because those. Putting aside the fact that it covered the good half of Death Note, i.e. the only part that happened because the story ended after L died. X. <laughs> is is yeah. the, is the fact that it um it was as I now it's been a while since I saw that trilogy, but as I recall, it was not exactly slate. It was still reaching the same destination. Differently, was it changed the ending? To basically be that L oh, had been well, spoiler warning for a almost 12 15 year old statutes show statutes passed statutes passed that's why i say yep it's, yeah. yep. it's, but it's basically free game <laughs> l, after l dies it re, or before l dies he reveals he had already deduced who that light was kira and he's the one that ends up uh, catching him instead of and, uh, near and mellow are nowhere to be found in this movie they are sir mm. not sir is not appearing in this film <laughs> <laughs> so it yeah, that that actually works out very well in its favor. Now, and also it doesn't hurt that this show had a really awesome cast with Tatsuya Fujiwara as like Yagami, who's real, who did a really great job, Kenichi Matsuyama as L, and then there's the actor who played Light's father. I'm trying to actually double check his name because I got to pull up the full cast list mm -hmm. here. Because it's actually a name that a lot of us might actually know if we've watched a certain name. Hirotaka, Hirotaka Koga. I believe uh, is the name I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I'll double check, make sure I got the right one. No, no. Takeshi Kaga. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Takeshi Kaga as Soichiro Yagami. I'm going to say two words in Japanese. And if you recognize these words, you will know exactly who... Light's father was played by. <clears throat> Alert cuisine! <laughs> <laughs> no joke. Light's father Suichi was played by the ho by the main man behind the Japanese Iron Chef. <laughs> and that and that's what that's what's really cool about uh, that. Huh? At, so so like we got the adaptation for the. There was an American one, which was the Netflix adaptation, right? And then the Japanese yeah. one, right? And the American one was blue, and the yeah. Japanese one absolutely rock socks, right? Here, there's but actually the, three live-action adaptations of Death What's Death the in Japan. There, there was no, there was actually three just in Japan. There's four oh. overall because yeah. there was the movies, the 2006 movies that I mentioned. There was a uh, a mini series that. Uh, actually was put, released to Crunchyroll many years uh, several years afterwards and then there was a a second series of movies released in 2016 that actually spun off into its own mini series called uh, Death Note the New Generation wow mm -hmm. and well, see, what what's cool about the movie though is like they had people even at the I recognize like as soon as you said Iron Chef in Japan I was like oh yeah he is on that show you know and, and like that's what's so cool about it, and and I think the reason why the the Japan one excelled over the American one is because they spent more budget on it, right? Like yeah, over over like two times the budget of the American version, and that's why it was so successful. Well, honestly, it doesn't need a big budget for these because there wasn't really that. It was mainly probably just for actors. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd say there's not that many effects aside from Ryuk. Yeah, that's really that's really the only one in that, and I think um. If I recall correctly, with the with the 2006 run, um, they used pra they tried to use practical effects for Ryuk. No, no, no it was no, CG. No, it was CG. it was still CG. Yeah, you I'm can't do Ryuk practical. Period. There's just no way. I think some people. But, I think some people could, but it would be it would be quite an undertaking. 
Like, yeah. It would probably be a hybrid. Uh, it would be both together, actually, kind of like what Jurassic Park did, but CGI included in it. Yeah. It Though the, 26, the 2015 movies also had some notable acts. Like, the second movie of the 2016 trilogy actually featured Masaki Suda, a.k.a. my boy Philip. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... The but the death but that Death Note run as a whole that's our benchmark. Yeah. That that is that is the that is the that is the gold that is the um, gold standard. And uh, my fir- my f- now unfortunately my fir- my first introduction to attempts at doing at doing live action anime were not as um, high quality at at first. It, this was this was this was le- this was less. Uh, this will be my one shades. This was less middle cluster hopper. This was more growing kuga. <laughs> All right, what's your stuff for through? The live action Fist of the North Star. Oh. Actually, actually, I saw that. I think that might have been my first. I just I think I blocked that one from my memory. Oh, you're gonna love mine. Just wait. Oh boy. <laughs> what do you got? Let's talk about yours first, and then we'll get to mine. <laughs> so I have not seen Fist of the North Star, but I have uh s- like saw like descriptions of it. It actually is on one of my watch lists right now. Mm-hmm. It's 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 age will show very hard, especially the original series that everyone remembers, but. It still has some good to it. It still has a lot of fun to it. Mm-hmm. Just seeing Kenshiro being a motherfucking boss. So it still has, like, uh, some pretty cool stuff in it as far as, uh, like, graphics go and plot and stuff like that. Does it actually veer away from its original source? Not, Not- entirely, no. I mean, a couple, a couple, a couple small things got got trimmed off for got trimmed off for the sake of time, but right, nothing, but nothing egregious. Um, but for for a lot of people, their their introduction for a lot of people in the eighties, their introduction to Fist of the North Star or Hokuto no Ken, because um, Hokuto does not refer to the North Star; it refers to Ursa Major. It's one of those classic mistranslations. Yeah. Is not is not is was not was not the series itself, but rather the movie that came out shortly beforehand. Um, a similar thing yeah. happened with Gundam, where the f- the first introduction to Gundam for a lot of people was the movie tr- was the uh, movie trilogy that was trying to truncate the original series. Um, and then shortly after shortly afterwards. Um, the there was an attempt at a at a live action take and i'm going to be flat out honest they could have had they could have had a top tier hollywood budget and it still would have been doomed to failure was it just the overall script of it is that what it was or just a they failure were, in translation to the uh, english they were trying but they were trying with a 80s b movie budget yeah, I'll put it that way. Yeah, it's one so, of those kind of things. So basically, they make Mortal Kombat from the '90s look good. Is that what you're saying? Oh, absolutely. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> that, no, that fir- that first Mortal Kombat movie still holds up. It cer- it certainly has its it certainly has its cheese, but th- but um, well, would, I'll I'll put it this way: I would rather watch that original one than watch the Mortal Kombat movie that came out a few year that came out um. La- that came out um, more recently. Recently, mm. I still watch both of them over Annihilation, but the but um, there but I have issues with that most recent one that a lot of people are kind of overlooking. But Rails, um, the big the but the bi- the big reason that I I even end up watching because you because you might think why would I subject myself to that? Well, aside from my rampant masochism, um. This was during my Hollywood video days. And there was and there was no art on the cover, so I had so I was just told that there was this awesome 
um, an anime called Fist of the North Star, and when when all you ha when all you have is just is just the is just the gen is just the generic Hollywood video or blockbuster or tidal wave, I'm dating myself, um, on on the thing, you don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> So I had I had no idea I had no idea and I th and I didn't know I didn't know better until 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 about six months later. Technically speaking, I wasn't supposed to walk out with the thing, but there are benefits to being ta being taller than some adults. Because <laughs> <laughs> so what this movie sounds like to me is if it's going on my watch list, I probably need to have a drink first, right? Before uh, I watch it. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I don't. I have not seen anyone try and do a DVD release of the live-action Fist of the North Star. Now I'm gonna have to go look. Um, I get the feeling that is that someone's probably mirrored the thing on YouTube, and if if someone digs hard enough, they might be able to f might be able to find it on VHS or something. But of course, if you're doing that, you're braving um, you're braving treacherous waters. But I I put it I put it right up there with say Godzilla 1985 where it's something that everybody involved with it would rather it not exist. And as an as an aside, Godzilla 85 I consider to be the I consider to be worse than the um than Zilla. Okay, so um. I don't see an English release. Actually, no, wait. Yeah, I found one. Uh-oh. Uh, Monk, check the council. I'm afraid. Um, here's something interesting that I found on the great and all-powerful, truthful <laughs> Wikipedia. Uh, so now I can kind of see it, but you know the scars on his chest because I, I was looking, I was reading this, and it's near the bottom. The scars on his chest in the box art and in the movie, it, it has meaning. So, do you, so you want to hear what it is? Aside from what we all know, that the scar, the seven scars are designed to be, I believe, it was one of the dippers. Yeah. Well, yeah, Ursa Major, the big. Well, movie. that's that. That's that's funny, but in the in, on the set itself, this is exclusive to the live action movie. Gary Daniels, who was the actor, his nickname on the set was Condom Man, in reference to prosthetics used to create the famous chest scars being made from unrolled condoms. <laughs> that is what those scars are made of on the actor, and I'm just like. All right, I gotta watch this now. So I appreciate both of y'all <laughs> making me watch this movie now. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Hold on, I have to explain to my wife what the hell I just started cackling about. So we're talking about the live-action Fist of the North Star. Oh my right? gosh! And it turns I out have to watch the, it now. The actor Gary Daniels, who played Ken, <clears throat> was nicknamed Condom Man. Mildred. Because yep. the prosthetics <laughs> they used to create his like well, got me stars into. were unrolled condoms. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Shades, okay. wait, wait, wait. Shades does this room feel colder all of a sudden? Yeah, I'm it's freezing, bad. bro. <laughs> okay, okay, let's move on. Colder, colder, colder. Let's, I, I say we move on to worse things. Um, <laughs> we're on the topic of unrolled condoms. <laughs> All right. Oh, I gotta do this right. Hold on. Atophosis experience the fuck? <laughs> in live action. Yeah, we've already gone through our we've already gone through our pain. So, at oh, so Atto, you're I'm, cring you're up next. I'm, I'm cringing. I'm cringing. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. I'm collecting myself. Unfortunately, I ha I'm going to be ashamed to admit this. The first movie that I watched that was a live action anime was in 2009, the year after I graduated. 
Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> oh! oh, you, you poor soul! I have all and the pity for you, sir. I feel, I feel we, your pain. We just got done discussing the gold standard of live action anime movies. The the standard that people should follow. By the way, that movie Death Note came out before Dragon Ball, correct? Like Death Note was what two thousand six. Yeah, this yeah, Death Note came out before BBE. Yeah, two thousand six, the gold standard of live action anime movies, and yet this company that made Dragon Ball Evolution absolutely blew it. I knew it was going to be a terrible movie, and this was in the beginning. I knew it was going to be terrible when he's standing there in the mirror and puts gel on his hair, and then channels his uh, is it Chi in Dragon Ball? Yeah, mm -hmm. channels his Chi. And spikes his hair up. And I was like, this film's going to be awful. Awful. But I watched Death Note after Dragon Ball Evolution, and it redeemed it for me. But Dragon Ball was my first taste in live-action films uh, for the anime genre. And, uh, yeah. No. no. <laughs> I'll never watch that movie ever again. I, I made it through, thankfully, but I'll never I, watch it again. I remember, I remember when that thing came out, and Lanny... Uh, Lana Pator had put up a at at be, had, was so disgusted by the film he put up he put up a um he put up a he put up a link to a to a mega um cloud that ha that ha that had that had the film up because he did not want and he did not want to see any profit made from that movie um Ugh. which I do one thing. I do remember when um when screens of, when screens of that thing got leaked because I will admit I only saw a tra a trailer of it and I th mm -hmm. the only the only um thing and I ended up making fun of some of the interesting casting like having the guy I always knew as as that as that as that as that, as that punk ass of a vampire Spike in uh, in yeah. Buffy verse as Pi as Piccolo when it should have been Sam Jackson. Correct. <laughs> I agree. Um, and there was also the fact that when I saw when I saw their take on the Ozaru, I could not look at the thing without busting out laughing. I had I had to yeah. I had to scroll down in the thread that on the thread on the that floor. movie. Oh, uh, I, luckily enough, I didn't watch it in the absolute disaster. There's guns in the movie. Yeah, it was, okay, it was the terrible. guns thing's not a big deal because back in the original Dragon Ball, they did have that kind of thing. Hmm. And here's the thing: it would have could have been a lot worse. Originally, yeah. Piccolo wasn't going to be green. Oh yeah, yeah. There's, there's there's um I've I've seen I've seen shots of yellow Piccolo. I think it's supposed to be more white, but I think even uh, even James Ma even James Masters was like, nope, no, 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 no. I know Dragon Ball enough to know he's supposed to be fucking green. You make him fucking green. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Literally looks like a cheesy alien from a, a like a '90s movie. Yeah, but is is it wrong of me that I wanted just I wanted just one outtake of Sa of Sam Jackson as Piccolo saying, "I have had it with these motherfucking Saiyans on this motherfucking <laughs> planet." <laughs> I actually think Sam Jackson would have been amazing to be casted in this movie. Um, would it turn it around? Probably not. But Sam Jackson would have influenced the script. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think they could have afforded them either. No. Um, now we've ar we've already. But the f the funny thing is, is that I don't know over the years.
the majority of as much as 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 much as easy as it is to laugh at the, to laugh at the American attempts and and say and say that the and say that Japan could do it better. J even Japan isn't all isn't all that good isn't all that good at it. Because we, no. we brought up Death Note, but with a lot of the other ones that have that have propped up in the in the last fifteen years, the highest of highs that they can reach is mediocrity. Yeah. Um. There are well, two. Have... There are two exceptions that I do that I do need to that I do need to cover that I t I've talked about in the past, and I and we and I talked about before we went live. The first of those is um, Blade of the Immortal, which, for the record, is a fucking awesome manga. Um, I it did get adapted into an anime in in the late two thousands, but it was animated by B Train, who were the complete wrong choice to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, you have a very you have a very sane in action project, and you're giving it to the the team who, at, at that point, was known mostly for mostly for stuff like Dot Hack Sign and the and the Girls with Guns trilogy. You know, very very slow build, dr very slow build, heavy drama kind of series. Um. They also they also did the uh, Arc the Lad anime, but everybody's forgot about it, that, but me. <laughs> the point. The point is, it'd be like. The point is, is that um, B Train was the was the wrong team for the job. Something like Blade mm -hmm. of the Immortal. If you just look at the the um, the st the the uh, stills of the manga of that, you give that kind of thing to Madhouse. Yeah. Um, that's that's definitely their real their territory. It's also the reason why I'm glad nobody that a lot that um. A anime version of Vagabond has not is not in the cards Cause... yet. This film is actually one of the um, I've I've seen this too, Mildred, and I I agree with you on that too. But also, just to point this out, uh, and and this I'm looking up because I, I I wanted to compare. But so an awful movie that we watch, um, you know, we just we just talked about Dragon Ball. Mm -hmm. Grossed over nine million dollars. Okay, awful movie. Gross nine mil. Mm -hmm. But we go to this Blade of the Immortal, an absolutely truly underdog, underrated movie. Absolutely underrated. It is way better than Dragon Ball in all regards. Plot, script, voice acting. Um, as far as the characters go, as well, the actors, actresses, everything. It is fifty times. I would I wouldn't say a hundred times better. Like absolutely hundred times better. I would say fifty times better. The only problem is it didn't earn its its pay and what it's worth. It it, it grossed at point one eight million dollars. Unfortunately, See, yeah, there there is another factor. To the reason why Blade of the Immortal didn't get the love that it that even Dragon Ball got. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind that Dragon Ball had the marketing machine behind it. It did. And Big time. there's also the ratio of how much did it make versus how much did it cost. Mm -hmm. And in that regard, Dragon Ball Evolution completely tanked in comparison to Blade of the Immortal because mm -hmm. Blade of the Immortal probably had at least a light, slightly be uh, slightly lesser budget. Mm -hmm. Thus, it was easier for it to make up its losses even if it still failed. But there's... you know they had to have spent hundreds of millions of dollars oh, yeah. to make Dragon Ball Evolution and to only make nine million, that is a failure on every conceivable level. Yep, it is. There's there's also the there's also the fact that I um when it comes when it comes to this when it comes to this particular debate, I consider something like Blade of the Immortal to be kind of cheating for a couple reasons. One, um there's already a there's already a long and an illustrious culture of of what's known as period dramas in Japan. And two, is is the fact that Blade of the Immortal was directed by Takashi Miike, who it who is a who is a legend when it comes to when it comes to grindhousey style um style filmmaking. And so, He's also Mike is also a little bit um weird and unpredictable. 
Like one of his more recent things was Sukiyaki Western Django, where he had a bunch of Japanese actors trying to speak English. back did your is it just your connection that dropped or did we just lose the whole recording no technology loves to give us the middle finger what happened i have no i have no idea <laughs> it just so it, it just discord just derped Oh, so it's just Discord. At least we didn't lose the recording. That's what matters. No, no we didn't. <laughs> we didn't lose the recording. But and but anyway, um, Mike it Mike, um, who would, who also had also has a pretty decent live action Phoenix Wright to his record, um, is a very it is a very fascinating case. He he'll do, he'll do th he'll. Sometimes it'll do things that might seem like a sellout move, and then sometimes he'll do things that are very clearly him. Um, I'd say one of the biggest case in points with him is Ichi the Killer, which was how I got introduced to him. Mm. Anyway. So, we've talked about individual movies, mm -hmm. but... We, I think we can cut a battle angel because well, freaking James Cameron actually knows what the fuck he's doing. Um, that was the <laughs> that was the that was um, I have to correct you slightly on that. That was a, that was a Rodriguez project. Oh, was that Rodriguez? I could have sworn James Cameron was the one that worked on that. Cameron was, I think Cameron was producing, but the directing duties were on Rodriguez. Well, point still stands. Like, mm -hmm. th those two know what the fuck they're doing, and they understood the project, and they were, you know, we, we were talking about this before the show, the whole idea of being a fan is no, being a fan of something is no longer enough of a qualifier. Mm -hmm. But in this case, he was a true fan. They, you know, Cameron and Rodriguez, or at least Cameron, was a true fan of, of, Battle Angel Alita because he understood what it was that made it work and he was able to translate that. But my point was the point I was getting at was that while a lot of us bash on Western uh, produ productions for failing miserably, let us not for let us not think for a minute that the Japanese uh, production studios get any better because I'm looking I'm looking at three anime at live action anime adaptations that all tanked. And roughly for the same reason. Attack on Titan, Mob Psycho 100, and Full Metal Alchemist. And to be quite honest, though no matter no matter whether or not it was done in it, done in the states or done in Japan, I don't think and I don't think any of those would have would have really worked. And this this ties into some this ties into something that I have been a very big have been a very big stickler for. Um now I'll use I'll use video game to movie adaptations as an example to make to make my point. A lot of them end up sucking because they chose one th they chose one that wouldn't convert. Um, for in for instance, if you a if you were to do a live action adaptation of Dead Space, it would just come down to being a poor man's Alien or Event Horizon. 
A lot yeah. of there's a lot of video games that were that are essentially interactive knockoffs or heavily inspired by po by popular film. Um, Resident Evil is w is one significant example in this. The first Resident the first Resident e trying to do a movie off of that would and would end up with a poor man's version of um uh, of of a of a of a Romero project. In fact, um funny story about that, Romero actually had a script inv involved in how that was going to work, but then they ended up giving it to Anderson and the rest is history. <laughs> um but the th the funny thing about the Romero version is that he ha he had some of the people working under him play through the game, record it, and send him tapes. Arguably being the first Let's Play. <laughs> and through the and through that he d through that he took notes about about his particular script. But the thing the thing of it the thing of it is when it when it comes to when it comes to those three instances you're doing something that is very difficult to replicate in live action when it comes to something like mob psycho being so being so heavily based in psychic powers um it wasn't re it wasn't really going to work actually i'm going to make an, a different argument for why they failed because there's another underlying problem that all three of these movies had, and especially Full Metal and Psycho, that really showed why something like this is almost impossible to do. And it doesn't matter what the genre is or what effects you would have to go through. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is compression. You have to compress in upwards of like 20 to 50 episodes in most cases into a two and a half hour tops movie. You're going to run into one of two problems doing that. You're either going to have to m cut uh, cut the story into parts and make each part its own movie to fit everything in, or what more often than not ha happens is you're going to completely condense the story to just the big moments. Full Metal Alchemist did this... Uh, it was, was a prime example of this, because... It just focused on getting to the next big moment. And even then, they never got through the whole story. They still ended up having to cut it short. Because they could. there was just so many big moments that, that the studios knew they had to adapt for fans to be happy. So they just focused on getting from one of those big moments to the next. Fuck whether or not the story actually makes any sense after that. Like, the whole Shao Tucker thing. Mm -hmm. They had to condense that sound so badly, it takes out all of the agency as to why... Ed and out would be pissed about Shao Tucker's actions. Truth be told, I um, I, th I think I think trying to I think trying to do a live action adaptation of Full Metal Alchemist, um, in film form is it is not something that can be easily done simply because there is simply because there is so much to digest. Yeah, you kind of have to make a prequel to the anime. Or you have to make a sequel and come up with your own story to really be successful. Because there's just too much of the meat there already. It's not, it, no, the, the bigger problem is, is that there's so much that has to be in that movie for it to make sense. For everything to kind of flow. That it's impossible. Yeah. Like I said, like there's every story beat in, the orig in both in the original manga... Let's you know the anime adaptations hit and, uh, had their issues here and there, but the original source material had it so much that you had to know for everything to make sense. Again, going back to Shao Tucker, they had to have the moments where Ed and Al spent time with Nina, mm -hmm. to, so that they could bond with her. That way, when they left to go do to do their training. When they come back and see what Shao Tucker's done to his daughter, there's that personal "what the fuck have you done to my friend" thing. Yeah, the movie couldn't do that because it didn't have enough time. Because it also still had to do the um, the the first, you know, the, the the origin story. Still had to do uh, oh, what the fuck's that priest name? Um, it still had to do. Let's let's just go. I just I just call, I just call, I just called him Baldy. 
Yeah. They had to do that story, which also got condensed because they they literally start the movie being chased without any context as to why they would be chasing him. Mm-hmm. Like all of these moments just got completely condensed, and there's it, it was just an action sp- a set piece. It's like, what's the fucking point now? We don't yeah, understand it's... anything about what's going on. Too it's many fun. MacGuffins. It's funny. Yeah. When, it's funny when you mention that because I just because I just realized what film that ki- that kind of folly reminds me of. Um, did any of you ever see King Arthur: Legend of the Sword? No. Now bits and pieces. You would th- you would think that doing a doing a film adaptation of King Arthur should be an idiot proof um, idea because it's been done plenty of times over the years. There will always be that idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I've said in the past you cannot make something idiot proof because the universe will create a bigger idiot. Well, <laughs> yeah. This is this was one of those cases. Because the because they because um the guy be, the guy behind the director behind it has has a is very good at the idea of tr- of trimming the unnecessary fat. The problem is, is that because of the fact that he's trying to go from from moment to moment, he he igno- he ignores he ignores the rubber what's been called the rubber band theorem. Um, Tarantino had talked about this in an in, in interview a while back. The idea is you have you have a rubber band, and as the scene is going on, you're slowly stretching and stretching and stretching and stretching and stretching, and, stretching, and the thing is getting more and more tense. And just when the thing is about to snap. You let go, and th- and then a- and then after after the audience has a bit has a bit of recovery time, you start the process again. Whereas he he is constantly trying to have that ma- that maximum tension, and I get the feeling that the live action Full Metal Alchemist is under the same issue, constantly trying to have that constantly trying to have that maximum tension without letting the audience, um, cool down and um. <laughs> Sorry, I got thrown off for a second from Lady K laughing in the background. What are you guys laughing at? Because whatever it is, it's distracting us. Sorry. I'm keeping a straight face. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about her. He said they. Whatever. <laughs> we're breaking the first. I'd say we're breaking the first rule of television, but we're not on television, which is good because <laughs> if it was, I'd probably I'd probably go bankrupt getting FCC fines. Uh, also, since you said that, I had to hit this. Live TV is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but when, but when it, I'd say, but when it, now when it comes to something like Mob Psycho, I don't, I, I don't see, especially that first season as plot intensive. But in that kind of situation, psychic powers are something that is very tricky to do in live action. And I'd say it's even more so when you consider when you consider all the craziness that go that go that goes down in any work um, based on based on one, um, where the, where um, especially especially when it comes to Mob in this case when he's at one hundred. Yeah, that to makes sense though. I think in this modern era with CG the way it is, it's a little more tolerable, to, uh, more feasible. I mean, they were able to pull off a live-action JoJo, and while it wasn't perfect, it certainly wasn't all that bad. Yeah, that that's certain. That's certainly one thing. But um, but imagine the di- imagine the difficulty in trying to pull off the trying to pull off the Battle of Haystack versus Question Mark. Mm. Uh, you'd need like a Michael Bay kind of budget to pull that kind of thing off. <laughs> Even even then, that still that still might not be that still might not be enough. But and that that's that's the big that's the big reason why why I say that trying to do trying to do animation into live action is going to be tricky because animation can get away with a lot more than what you can get away with in live action. Chief among it being exaggeration. This is something yeah. that animation. Regardless of which side of the which side of the ocean you're on, is very good at, and has been very good at for for decades now. Yeah, doing a, uh, a an adaptation of a uh, slice of life or a dr- or shojo anime, 
that's easy pickings. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Kaguya-sama or on high school. I mean, even though those didn't do much better, all, all things considered, they have a better shot at it because they can – you don't have to do much. You, you can know, also some ju- of the top – you can also hire the people who do who do the stage shows for that kind of thing. Yeah. Like I'm looking at like the top rated live action anime adaptations on IMDb. And the shows that you're seeing are stuff that are very down to earth realistic. Tokyo mm-hmm. Revengers, Given, Hikaru no Go, GTO. I mean the 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 the, only, the first one that comes up that has any kind of supernatural element to it is a live action Yu Yu Haka show. Which I know, I know that there's another one of those planned, and I'm still very cautious about it. Well, it's very, got a uh, 8.2 rating on IMDb, if that tells you anything. I'm very interested in Cowboy Bebop, too, because that's going to be... Uh, I, am, I am watching that one carefully, because I'm not sure. Yeah, they can either blow it, or it'll be good. Netflix, net, Netflix has not earned the benefit of the doubt from me lately. No, me neither. Um, at the at the very le- at the very least, when it came to now, Grant, I could say I could say the same thing about cr- about Crunchyroll Originals, but at the very least, they've um, I think they've more or less le- more or less learned their lesson, and there are other problems. Like as much as I pick on X Arm, that was not Crunchyroll's fault. That was the directing staff behind that's fault because they decided to go in acting like the big swinging dick when they had no animation experience. No. And um well you saw the you saw the we talked about the result when their trailer got fucking ratioed. But I'd but I'd say I'd say an, I'd I'd say another I'd say another 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 particular issue. And this is some this ties into something that Filmento said in his review of the more recent Mortal Kombat movie. Is mm. the fact that you the fact that you have to hit on these highlights even if it doesn't make sense for what you're doing. That you have to hit on these certain moments, catchphrases and what and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and some sometimes sometimes it can be cer- it can certainly be understandable. But there are other times where you have to where you have to face reality in the sense that you have a certain amount of time that you di- that is much shorter than you had with a series. Even say a twelve episode series, you you're only you're only gonna get two you're only gonna get um ninety minutes to two and a half hours at most. I know two hour films have become more and more frequent, but I always say I've always had the attitude of build for ninety because you can because then you can do um kind of thir- kind of thirty minute acts. Yeah. And it, and if it turns out you can make room for more, you can make room for more. But yeah, start 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 at the bare basic, then work your way up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, to get to add on to your point though, yeah, you know you have to accept the fact that you're not going to be able to please everybody. It's just not possible. You don't have the time, even if you have a good budget, you don't have the time to be able to hit every note. So you have to decide what is absolutely essential. What is what do I need to have? For this movie to work, mm-hmm. focus on that, and then if you get if you do it right, it'll be popular enough to get a sequel. Then you can start focusing on adding the rest of the shit. Not to mention the anime community is thirsty, like not like in a bad way. Just no, no, I got you. Yeah, their yeah, expectations are high. As long as you meet the bare basics, you're probably gonna get a hit because. Lord knows we've had so many stinkers. We're desperate for a win. Mm-hmm. And I, I, whenever, whenever there's the talk of, about how about how um about about the whole expectations thing, a lot of a lot of people have taken that into thinking that if you even slightly divert from the source material, then people will cry foul. I I would actually argue against that. Now, obviously, doing massive diversions from 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 source material is is not it is not particularly advisable. Um, look, and and we and I'm pretty sure you can think of a few of a few offenders on on that front, shades. <laughs> but as but as long as as long as you get as long as you get the as long as you get within the relative target area, 
and co and cover and cover and cover the I cover the general gist of the story. I think I think fans will be I think the fans will be significantly more forgiving. There will certainly be the hardcores, much like there's the purists in the Tolkien community. <laughs> but on but on the but on the whole, you'll end you'll end up getting more favor than you would have lost. Yeah, you can't you can't try to please the hardcores because you won't you will fail mm -hmm. every time. The hardcore is expecting perfection you end or expecting everything to be perfect to them. <clears throat> and you can't meet that. But the the general the majority audience they just want you to capture the soul, the spirit, the feel of the original work. If you can match that even if you have to make some changes to make it work, as long as it still feels like what they're hoping for, you'll usually get you'll usually win them over in the end. Mm -hmm. I got that from Death Note, and I got that from Roni Kenshin. Yeah. Now, that was the other one that I wanted to mention because because if that I'm put that I'm putting off that I'm putting off the table because of cheating. Um, Roni Ken Roni Kenshin. Now, I've only seen the first two. I'm not I'm not t I don't even know if the third movie has finally come out yet. But the reason why I consider that one cheating is. It has to do with the has to do with the subject matter. Once again, you're dealing you're dealing with a source material that is that is drawing heavily upon a classical period of Japan, and the, and thus you can bring in a lot of period drama people to work to work on that. And you and it will and you will and you won't have to do too much. There's there there's of course still the still the levels of crazy that you'll have that you'll have to deal with because it is because it is still a shonen series, yeah. <laughs> but you but you won't have to go quite as crazy as you would as you would with say Attack on Titan. Um, something that I think a, I think a lot of people overlook is the fact that, um, sci that science fi science fiction works or spe even speculative fiction works are always going to be ridiculously expensive mm. and especially something like say attack on titan um the only way you could make that kind of thing work is by spending a lot of money not just and not just too. on i mean yeah um, i've seen some people say well yeah you 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 could you could see you could cg up the titans that's only one part of it you'd have to you'd have to build you'd have to build some degree of a proper set for the for the for what for the wall for the walled cities, just just with that alone, is gonna is not gonna come cheap. By the end of it, ninety percent of that movie, like at least I'd say seventy percent of that movie is gonna be CG. Mm -hmm. With how much you would have to add, because you'd have to CG the Titans, you'd have to CG the walls, because there's no way you're building. A, like you may have small sets, but when you're when you do those panning shots, yeah, there's gonna be CG all over the fucking place. Mm -hmm. Plus, you'd have to add a little bit of CG for everyone using the, the 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 mobile gears. As far as the three, as far as the three D gears, I've seen some argue that you could you, that that you could use that you could use um the kind of wire work that that was pi that was pioneered in Hong Kong. I don't agree with that because the three D gears go too fast. Yeah. What makes them work in the Hong Kong films is that. There, more often than not, like you know, the the prime example, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, that was like one of the ones that pri that really perfected the formula, was that when they were on the wireworks, they were slowed down. Mm -hmm. You could see it; they were floating in the air. You can't do that with Attack on Titan because, like you said, the whole point of the 3D gears is they're supposed to be like very quick. You know, it launches out like a rocket off your off the sides and then and then pulls you into it. You can't do that with those kind of wireworks. No. 3D maneuver gear is essentially a gas gun on steroids. Yeah. And but that's what's uh, beautiful about the Kenshin. I kind of veer off for a second. Uh, I mean, yes, it is simple. It's you know, it's out of Japan. I mean, it's very simple time, very simple thing. But the ninjas used. Um, but they consider quote unquote magic back in the day, like deception. And that's where their arts come in. Like, um, you know, their sword styles, the Kurachi, you know, the, the striped arms, you know, from, uh, some of the people in the, in the, uh, the ninja clan, 
like the striped arms, deception, stuff like that. All that, all those things, like they sit there and say it's an art style or a magic, right? But it, it, it's it, it's not. It's just deception, and that's what good story writing brings in on how you can make something simple. But at the same time, I could be like, well, this is simple. I can throw a lot more money in it and make it actually a decent film with decent actors. And that's what's beautiful about the Kenshin universe. But when now, I will I will I will admit that there is one other factor that ha that gives me a bit of bias when it comes to the when it comes to the live action Kenshin, and that is the that is the choice in actors. That being um, Takeru Sato. You know what? You know why shades. Oh, trust me. I'm sure. I, I'm sure. Easy writers' peer, peer ears are perking up already. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did. I did see the live action Bleach, and truth be told, that, that's another instance of of one where you're pick where you're picking the wrong an you're picking the wrong anime to do it. Um, Too much magic. I heard that one was actually pretty good. It w it was all it was uh, it was decent. Um, and of course, and of course, it's always nice to see a former Toku actor get into some get into something um, a bit more legit. <laughs> not not to say to not to say Toku acting isn't, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. But but there but the big the big problem is Tite Kubo's art style is very stylized. Um. And of course, of course, you have of course you have the elephant in the room and the fact that you're gonna have to CG up any um, any depiction of hollows. And yeah, there. But the the bigger thing is in some cases timing because I was on I was honestly confused at why it took so long for a live action Bleach to come about. Yeah, the series had long been over, in both manga and anime forever. Only now are we hearing that there might be a comeback for it, but it, it was pretty much dead in the water, and all of a sudden, live action adaptation? What? You know, the whole point of most of these adaptations is to sell the source material, mm -hmm. because they're still ongoing, and they need a way to draw you into that. That's how, that's how half of the anime out there is made. And it's made because it's an advertisement. And when it can, and um, the only the major thing that Kubo the Kubo, that Kubo was hyping up around that time was Burn the Witch. Which, to be fair, the Burn the Witch OVA is actually decent, and I'd say it's Kubo playing more to his strengths. He, I consider I consider Kubo to have to have the same kind of strength and weakness that Toriyama does. When he's depicting a fantastical world, he's at his he's at his strongest. When he has to do a when he has to do a character centric story, he's not as good. Which is what, which is why, I will, which is why I've said that Dragon Ball is better than DBZ, and why the best parts of Super were the, were the non-arc stories, especially especially the whole thing of the whole thing of Vegeta being the um, being the eternal straight man. <laughs> um, that and that and breaking the fourth wall with realizing that he's fighting a gag manga, because. Doctor Slump doesn't get enough love. Yeah, <laughs> but the but the um the big now we're in. Have any of you seen? Have, I'd say I'd say one other instance where it where it was able to somewhat work because of the fact that it it knew the right right amount of material that that it was dealing with was the live action Parasite. Ah. I haven't seen the live action version, but I've seen the original. I've mm -hmm. seen I've seen the original anime, the anime adaptation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like the thankfully for there, while there's still a good amount of CGI, it's a lot more easier to do. And the stories there was a lot you could there's a little bit you could condense. There's some fat you could trim there to make that work. It's just a matter of finding the right cast and knowing where to trim. In that particular case, they split in they split it into two movies. That probably did them a world of good there. Mm -hmm. um, although that that a quest a question that I've a question that I've pondered over the last three days is whether is whether or not a shift should go towards tr towards the tr trying to do small trying to do um, small screen live action series instead of full on films. 
I, had... I think it depends on the material in question. I think in some cases, yeah, a movie would be enough. But I think in other cases, a miniseries would probably be the better option because, yeah, you've got a lot to condense already. You don't want to have to condense it more than you need to. Mm-hmm. It's kind of more guaranteed money, too, because then you can sell it to advertisers. Because if it's a TV series and you put it on like actual television, if anyone will take it, in an ideal world, that's guaranteed money because you got advertisers. I... But at the same time, you can uh, put it on a, a, a big publisher's platform and get guaranteed money there, too. It's just a matter of coursing them in to buy it. You know what I'm saying? I ultimately realized that it, that it would not be an advisable move. Um, for for a couple of reasons, one um, that kind that kind of that kind of tie into similar things. The first it, the first is um, act, the first is the is a cultural thing. Um, as much as much as as much as streaming services like like Netflix, like Crunchyroll, like Hulu, and so on and so on have have taken have taken root in the states and in and in Europe when they can actually work. Um. There isn't the, there isn't the culture for that in Japan just yet, um, at le- at least the last I checked. Be- and to use an example for this kind of thing, most of the New Japan World subscriptions are coming are are coming from this are coming from the states or from Europe, not as not as much in Japan. And I get the I get the feeling that it's the, that's the same thing when it comes to. The att- when it comes to the attempt to try and sell Netflix in Japan with a bunch of anime projects, including them creating their own VTuber. Although I will give them pro- I will give them props for having a decent design for their VTuber, but still. Yeah. Um. But the but the fa- the fact of the matter is that is that there's it's going to take a lot more it's going to take a lot more time to to really have that work when you consider that. Um, the biz that the business side of Japan is very, very conservative and very, um, very, very, very skittish on th- on on the idea of jumping on new things. Hell, I, I remember the guy behind J List talking about how much how much of an ordeal it was to even get, even get a lot of businesses to consider that there was demand for their products in the West. And that and that was just with visual novels. The uh, the other cultural issue is has to has to deal with the the um relationship that a lot of a lot of theaters have um in the states we have antitrust laws so studios are not allowed to own any theaters there isn't anything like that in japan and th- and that is key that is key here So because of the, because of that they could they could push for some they could push for these kind of adaptations. Once again, folks, technology hates me. <laughs> then again, it hates all of us. So I believe it is a true believer in equality. But when it now the, now um, given the given this given this talk of trying to of trying to bring um. Li- get, of trying to bring um, animation to li- to live action, I think th- I think the reason why a lot of slice of life ends up being the more being the more um, positively received is you can more or less do the kind of setup that you would do for a J drama and you'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of a lot of slice of life is bi- it basically could be considered a J drama in animated form. Pretty much, you know. Again, I'm looking at this. You know, we mentioned a few already, but like I said, Orange High School Host Club, GTO, uh, Anohana is another good one that would probably work. Even though there's a technically a supernatural element to it, it's not. Th- it's more about the drama itself. Mm-hmm. So a lot of those kind of shows tend to be a lot easier to produce because, like you said, it's just basically a J drama. You don't need to add all the superficial elements, supernatural elements, or all the crazy CG. Mm-hmm. Um, and of, co- of course, w- of course, when it comes to, when it comes to the, anim- when it comes to certain animation styles or certain art styles, 
um, there's no there is no way you're gonna be able to pull that pull that off in live action. Like, can you can you imat can you imagine the amount of money money you'd have to spend if somebody wanted to do a live action, um, red line? Oh God, no. <laughs> or fuck, imagine a or one fuck, piece. <laughs> um, that. I know, I know that there's, I know that o, I know that Oda has is apparently a apparently a consultant in the Netflix One Piece whenever that shows up, but um, write that shit off now. <laughs> no, I have I have absolutely no fa no faith in that. For no putting aside the fact that Buddha has already closed his eyes three times on Netflix's attempt at br at breaking into um live action anime. There's also there's also the fact that it that even though we have seen some really great cosplay when it comes to when it comes to One Piece, um, the fact of the matter is Ichiro Oda's intentionally um re in intentionally exaggerated style of style of character design is not something that's conducive because can you think of can, you can I don't think you could get the biggest fucking bodybuilder, some whoever's whoever's at the top of the IFBB this year, and get them to play Frankie. <laughs> Not to mention half the other big muscly guys that he has in that show. Mm -hmm. Getting one of those kind of people is gonna be tricky enough. Getting a whole bunch of them, ha! <laughs> good luck, good, good fucking luck. Not to mention, well, bodybuilders are not exactly known for being good actors. Yeah. There, there's going to be some body suits or CG used in a lot of these guys. Let's just call a spade a spade here. And a question that I, I remember asking this question when there was the advertisement of the live action Jungle Book and then live action Lion King. When it's ninety percent CG, does it really count as live action? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think so. Yeah, because you're already going to have to do a lot of CG just for Luffy alone. Because, well, I mean, stretch arms are exactly a normal thing. No. no, it's not. I mean, in Dead and Ghost in the Shell technically fall in that category too. I mean, I, I watched a little bit of it, not a lot, but when it comes to when it comes to Ghost in the when it comes to trying to do a live action Ghost in the Shell, um, there were t there were two major problems with it. The first the first had to deal with um pacing, and the fact that it was trying to cram three different t three different versions of Ghost in the Shell into one, because it was it was trying to d it was trying to do the uh, the first film, i.e., i.e. the whole thing with the whole thing with the puppet master, and ele and ele elements of the manga and elements of standalone complex in one film. That's um that's one that's one too many uh, that's that's dipping into one too many pots. Many yeah. The the other the other major problem was timing much like how and the the um film adaptation of ender's game wasn't terrible but it was done too late you have a same you have the similar kind of thing that f the first the first ghost in the shell um animated film is um was a massive influence on 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 writers animators directors and so on for decades mamoru oshii is a, is a legend for a reason, and because and eventually those those people who were inspired by it used that as the as the basis to do their own projects up to and including the Matrix. In fact, I, in fact, I distinctly remember that the Wachowskis at the time had approached Joel Silver and said, "We want to do this, but for real." That was part of their initial pitch with the Matrix, and. Give, and given all given all of that and the and the cultural footprint that a lot of those things that were inspired by 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 Oshi's movie um can have come have come about trying to trying to do the source material after all that time is going is going to come off a bit flat at the same time they really had to wait this long to get it because of the kind of CG they would have needed to make it even feasible mm -hmm. to make a live action so they were kind of catch twenty two on this one. They really, you know, because at the same time, people have been clamoring for a live action gets. So they were like literally caught between a rock, a hard place, and a metal wall. And truth, truth, 
the I'd say I'd say one of the other things that didn't exactly help is coming out the is coming out within the same span of months as Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Yeah. A f a film a film that now in practice the two films have nothing to have nothing in common. On paper, however, they are they are still they're still high budget high budget cyberpunk projects with with. With well with well known actors and a large pedigree behind them, and when you end up having two similar enough things, one of them is one of them is going to end up is going to end up falling no matter what. Um, and given that Blade Runner is more popular here in the West, it was no surprise that it was the one that came out on top. There was there was all there was also the fact that there was a, that um. Blade Runner is Blade Runner is has been one of those films that's been anal that's been analyzed and d and dipped and dipped into in one form or another for decades. What with what with all the myriad all the myriad cuts of the film. And a a, sim a similar thing kind of happened with say Mar with say um Mars Attacks. Um where it where um Mars Attacks is is was unfor was unfortunate to have come around come out around the same relative span of time as Independence Day, and while the two have nothing in common, they're similar enough on paper. It's just it's just one of them looked a little bit more looked a little bit more serious and blockbustery of the time, whereas Mars Attacks was Tim Burton being Tim Burton. <laughs> that. That and try that and trying to make a movie off of trading cards. What the fuck was he thinking? And when it comes, I do remember. I do remember hearing hearing about a hearing a. And when it comes to, I know we've mentioned the whole slice of life thing, and obviously, GTO does not necessarily qualify as a slice of life, but it's still in that particular motif. There's not a whole, there's not a lot of whole, whole lot of craziness going. It's. It's ba it's basically a it's basically a Yankee movie, and there's plenty of stories about Yankees and gangsters and the like, and that's a key that's a key thing. A lot of a lot of the ones that have actually managed to get out of that doldrums are ones where there's a um there's a genre that they, there's a genre in film that they can build upon and use that. Yeah. Whether whether it's dramas, whether it's uh, whether it's period films, or what or whether it's um whether it's get whether it's gangster movies. And when it and when it comes to something like GTO, how how many times over the years have we have we seen have we seen that kind that kind of premise of the of the new of the new teacher whipping whipping a bunch of problem children into shape? Hell, even in the West, we've got a few of those. Yeah the the point is, the point is is that is that it's it's something that's been that's been well tread, so it's, so it's not too much of it's not too much of a, of a leap. Um. And I I apply parasite as well to this kind of thing because at the end of the day, parasite is a creature feature. Yeah, it's a it's a far more character focused creature feature, but it is a creature feature nonetheless. But a, a but I th but I know th what and when it comes to when when it comes to when it comes to some of the live action projects in the works, unfortunately there haven't been enough good ones to really develop it to really develop enough um goodwill and for as as i was as i was as i was planning out how i was going to do this episode one of the big ones that was always hovering over my head was the attempt at a live action akira but i don't even know if that thing is ever going to come out yeah, it has been in development hell for ages <laughs> it's i remember i remember the i remember there being one key art poster six years ago and even then I'm not entirely sh I'm not entirely convinced that wasn't just that wasn't just a hoax it, the live action Akira is going to suffer from what I will what I often call the Duke Nukem forever effect it has been so long with so much teasing about it still being made that by the time it comes out the hype's gonna be so big, it can never live up to it. It is even if it's actually good, it's not gonna be as good as people are gonna be hyped for. 
I'm I'm not even sh I'm not even sure if people if people are even hyped for it. It's Akira. There's hype for it. Trust me. Although, the fun the funny thing is is that it is that it it probably end up having the same problem that Ghost in the Shell had. In this in the sense of everybody's been taking notes from it because as you recall last night, I um I had that mini rant about about how I was sick of how I was sick of certain Western animators saying we're taking insp we take inspiration from anime and they only know two anime. <laughs> it's like okay, we get it. You've seen Akira and you've seen Sailor Moon. <laughs> Congra congratulations! Here's your no prize. Now get now get to the back now get to the back of the line and and now get to the back of the line and don't speak to me again until you've seen a third anime for once. But to bounce off that, there are a couple of things that uh, I would love to see uh, done, and I think I think something that doesn't really it's not really present in live action is actually uh, kind of sp sport films slash um, martial arts. And where I'm going with that is Hajime no Ippo. It's literally an anime about boxing. Bro, that's yeah. an easy movie right there. That's an easy live action movie. Easy. And no one's actually, jumped on it. Actually, I, I like that idea. But... Again, Hajime no Ippo is not as well known, especially here in the West. If there's any other anime similar to it that I think would be a decent live action adaptation, you're thinking of Megalobox. Think you read my mind, you motherfucker. Yep. That would be a really good one, and even Kenshi, the Mightiest Disciple, would also be a good one too. Kenshi, I see that. Ken Kenshi, I I could I could see, but it's it's borderline as hell. Um, I do. I actually do. I actually do think between the two, Megalobox would be the more appealing one because, even though even though you do you do have a you do have a quasi cyberpunk approach, um, with a lot with because of how, because of how tight, um, season season one is when it comes when it comes to its uh, story setup, it wouldn't it wouldn't be t it wouldn't be too hard to to compress that into it into a three act story. Yeah. First act would be Joe, uh, you know, ha starting out in the bar, and uh, I can forget, the, I forget the other guy's name, coming in and kicking his ass. Mm -hmm. Second act would be him going through the training with the with the uh, to to become a thing and have a montage of him going through some of the matches. Mm -hmm. You don't have to spend too much time on that. And then, of course, the third act would be the final bout at the end. Yeah. Um. And the. The other, the uh, the other, um, the other, re the other reason I go with that is, the g is that, I think I think but I think by by keeping pr by keeping any sort of practical effects to just, the um just the boxing gear, you can you can get away with a fair bit and, given how much given how much of a cultural icon the Rocky movies are, you can build you can build upon that you can build upon that kind of motif, and yeah. We um we had even though it involved robots and Hugh Jackman we had something that wasn't too far off with Real Steel a few years ago. Yeah. So there's a there's a there's a there's a back there's a backdrop that can that can be worked with. Um. I there's a small part of me that's tempted to say that to, that um if you if you if you hire the people behind Vikings to handle it a live action Vinland saga could be done. <laughs> Largely because that that is very much a historical piece. It's a dramatization of the story of Leif Erikson, also known as Eric the Red. Oh, don't lie to don't don't, don't bullshit. Well, you just want to see a live action Vinland saga cuz you love that series so fucking much. <laughs> It's a it's an anime about Vikings. How could I not? <laughs> Still gonna call you out on it, fucker. Um, given a, I, given all given all the Haruhi jokes I've I've made over the, over the past seven years, I suppose I I suppose I earned that. <laughs> and before anyone asks, no, I would not want to see a live action Haruhi. I could see that being a very big mistake. Some of. The the amount of the amount of craziness when it comes to the SF end of of Haruhi would be would be a mistake. And plus, if plus if that ends up doing multiple films, 
inevitably, inevitably, someone would have to tackle that arc, and I don't want to see that again. No. <laughs> Twitch. 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 <laughs> yeah. Plus, truth. Plus, truth be told, um, with some with something with something like that, one of the big one of the big appeals is the animation quality from Kyo Ani. Yeah. And to tr to tr to try and to try and um try and do try and do that without without them wouldn't wouldn't really work. And given how die given how diehard of a fan base that is, that'd be enough to cause people to riot. And I'd rather I'd um I'd rather not kill Ani get in get in more bad luck than they already had. Yeah. I've already got I've already got one cursed anime studio on my library. I don't need two. <laughs> Though, if there was one KyoAni work that I th could see being done live action, I'd say Violet Evergarden. I still haven't seen Violet Evergarden, but from what I from what I have seen, I'd say I'd say it would certainly work because it is kind of funny that a lot of the ones that that work are period pieces. And while Violet Evergarden yeah. isn't a period piece in the traditional sense, it's art it's art it's um visual styling Ver is very classical French, I guess. I guess I'd put it. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Um, I would, I, I would, I would also, I would also say that um, it it might be it might be tr it might be tricky to do, but it would be it would be funny as it'd be f it'd be funny as hell just for chaos's sake to see someone try to do a live action Lupin the Third. Uh, yeah, I think even they knew that was a bad idea. That's why they went with a CG film instead. And the f the first is actually I was I was hesitant about about that going CG, but truth be told, it was it it managed to get it managed to get the feel right, and it it certainly helped that they had the same voice acting cast in bo in both the sub and the dub. Yeah, you you can't go wrong with Richard Epcar, mm -hmm. aka aka anime dad. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm pretty sh I'm I mean I, I don't I don't like I don't like to pick, I don't like to pick on him over that, but if the shoe fits. Though, I'm going to go ahead and say this now. If anyone in the comment section even thinks about bringing up a certain series being done live action, I will be ripping heads off. Well, if you're gonna do that, at, le at least give me a week's notice so we can so we can um, so we can bill it and make some money off it. <laughs> you know, make you know, make a pay per view out of it. Budweiser, I'd jump at that shit in half a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you guys know better, mm. right? <laughs> oh, I, oh, I certainly know better. I, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the I'm talking about the audience. You guys know better, right? Mm. Right. Yep. But when there is there, even though it's not anime, there is one other um, elephant to the room when it comes to the idea of adapting animation into live action that I've been ignoring up up until this point, and I think it, I think it's time that I think it's time that I get this fucking elephant off of my couch, <laughs> even if it re even if it requires using a forklift or or thinking with portals, I am not I am not above doing either. Either, either that, or I hit the red button and you and use the catapult. I always remember that. I always forget that I installed that. <laughs> Originally, I used that in order in order to get in order to get rid of, in order to get rid of the family of, during um things get during Thanksgiving. You know how you know how it is. There's that one relative who won't leave because they haven't oh, finished their drink. <laughs> um, but. Some, but um, somebody asked me if once if I somebody had asked me if I was if I was ever go, if there are any um, what which if there are any of the li of the live action di live action Disney projects that that I that I've enjoyed and I said none of them. I hate every single one of them. Some of them I hate more than others, but I have not seen a single good one. And plenty and plenty of them are are worse than others. Yeah, Some... like Aladdin. Fuck you and fuck the six white horses your ass rode in on. <laughs> <laughs> I have got uh, I got 
disagree with that one, man. I, I, I thought that one was pretty good, actually. No. That one was fucked from the beginning because you were going to... You were... Because it was... Because... Due to how... Because of how iconic Robin Williams' performance was in the original, you have to try and match that. That ain't happening. Yeah, that that's a that's a given. Um... But we we've, we've talked about this constantly, um, and it's it's the timing in it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, by this time, by that time that movie came out, I mean, unfortunately, God re- God rest his soul, uh, Rob Williams passed away. Yeah. So, so due to that timing, everyone knew, hey, it, that that era of greatness is you know that is closed is a closed chapter. But uh, I think I think I believe Will said. He said this. He's he said the amount of pressure that he had to go through to be the genie. I, I think he said it in one of his interviews. He said it was astounding. The the pressure yeah, I, of being that role, you know? I, I'm not gonna knock Will Smith. Like mm-hmm. honestly, yeah, he had some massive shoes to fill. The problem is is that they were so massive they were impossible to fill. Like honestly, I know Disney had no had to do these live action adaptations because honestly, they pretty much ran out of things they could adapt and thus had to just keep going back to their wheelhouse. But that being said, they should have just left well enough alone because there was no way without Robin Williams there, there was no way they could do a live action Aladdin and make it even close to the original. Um, I will, I will say that, 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 um, that 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 one in particular is slightly there are there are big there are bigger offenders in the sea, in a sense. Um, I would cer- I would certainly sit through that again than sit through the gi- sit through the giant meh that was the attempt at Mulan. Ugh. Ugh. Because okay, you're okay. You're doing. You're not including any of the songs. You're not including Mushu. You are. You you are you're you're you are in, you're including a whole new a whole new character, and you and you're and you're split and you're splitting the captain into two characters. Is this any is this even an adaptation anymore? The yeah. Milan film, and to put it best, the Milan film pulled a Mortal Kombat. Uh, the story was different. New character, different. Even remove some characters. It, it was it was terrible. It was it, it, it was it was terrible. It, it should have never happened. And it, besides, once again, you, you you're leaving you know by leaving out Shang or splitting him up into two different characters. Even you deprive us. You know, and by to cutting out the songs, you have deprived the audience of the one thing they wanted out of a live action Mulan. Yeah. <laughs> because you know, it's, it's not li- it's not like uh, it's not like <laughs> thank you dear it's... but no I, I think we can all agree that if there's one thing when you think of the original Mulan if there is one song more than any other and there's a lot of good ones to be remembered but if there is one song you remember from that movie that it's be a man yeah and yeah. And it's, that song has nothing to do with with like. Here's the thing that people. And this is why it was cut. You know, they're they're trying to appease you know the gender thing. The, the whole thing that was cut. It's not cut to see like I'm going to make a an actual gender male out of you. It was no. I'm going to teach you to be a from a boy to a man. You know, with responsibilities, with with pride, with to, to honor. To make you, yeah, tough, mature, honorable. I want to make honorable. you tough. You know, it's not it's, about being a gender male. It's about being a man. Like, responsibilities, taking ownership. It's, glo- it's, it's powerful. The lyrics. It's just boot camp. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, look at the lyrics. Did they ever mention anything <laughs> specifically male? No. It, they don't. The... The thing... Now, as now, as now, um, of, now, of course, there's, of course, there's also, there's also the whole, the whole, 
the whole the whole thing the whole um thing with fi filming it not too far removed from a we from a Uyghur camp, which is just a level of un level of uncomfortableness that I that I can't wash off of this project. But I I but there was also the there's also the fact that um this was so you tur you turned a, you turned a character who had a who had a decent underdog story arc in in into a into such a Mary Sue that she was probably married to Sue. Yeah. And I remember I remember um I remember Professor Geek lamb lambasting this particularly hard because because of the fact that um they tr that they tried they tried to put a they tr they they um tried to put a hero's a hero's journey that do that doesn't fit um it's the same it's the same thing that happened with the li with the live action the live action beauty and the beast uh, there seems to be this mo this idea among certain people that um that the hero's journey archetype is is an is antiquated when it when well, if it's that antiquated and you try and break away from it, why is it that your breakaways keep sucking? The per the reason people use the hero's journey, including us in our reconstructions, is it fucking works. Um, the Be the Beauty and the Beast was such a beautiful film, though. I mean, they really didn't stray from the original concept, though. They still had the songs, not all of them, not not you know they didn't have all of them, but they still had the songs. Mm -hmm. The CGI was sharp. The actors and actresses were amazing. First of all, you get a big star, you know, but both Ooh, of them really a big star who complained up a storm about the original dress. Exactly. But the it's thing is, though, of... is... sorry, I just want to play. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to disagree with you that there's a lot of good out of the out of the live action Beauty of the Beast. But the point Monk made earlier was that. Some of them weren't as bad as others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this was but, one of those cases where this was one of the lesser of evils. But and that and that's what I'm trying to get to. Um, like what I was trying to say is is yeah, they did change some stuff in Beauty the Beast, but then and, and Disney looks at these looks at these films. Okay, so so listen, so you're you're in Disney. Okay, you have these great films, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast. You know, just to name a few, right? You have them. You've already created the live action of them. You saw the gross income that came from them. Who looked at Milan and said, you know what? Scrap it. Let's get rid of the musicals. Let's get rid of um, using the original story and maybe veering off from Little. Instead of take veering off from Little, let's veer off from it a lot. And you know what? That guy that was in the film, um, you know what? Let's take away his arrogance just a little bit so he can be friendly to everybody and appease the new people in it. Who looks at that and says, that's a great idea? Because Beauty and the Beast and these other films did fantastic. Why fix what's not broken? When it came, when it came to when it came to, when it came to something like that up Obviously, obviously, we can blame ex we can blame external factors, i i e um, i e and and shades. This this is gonna be me pandering. Um, West China. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, because we all we all know where we all know where the real we all know where the real one is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, but I, but I will, but I will, I will, I will admit that when it comes, when it comes to, when it comes to them, them messing around with their Renaissance properties, the bigger offender for me hasn't been the live action ones, but rather, rather the, rather the attempt to redo their own mythos. And there are two films in particular that I that I have to give a level of score, and even though one even though one of them I kind of enjoyed, and that is Maleficent and Cruella. Uh, Maleficent, I suppose, believe would be the one that you probably kind of enjoyed. 
I I I think the main reason for that is is seeing is seeing Angelina Jolie completely ham it. Cause she can pull that off. Yeah, I think that one was the lesser of evils there, but but Corella. Yeah, I I as soon as we saw that, there were two big problems that I saw immediately that completely ruined the movie and ruined what it was attempting to change with the lore. Number one, hi Joker, how you doing? Yeah, it was really <laughs> it was really trying to be um. It was tr it was trying to it was trying to be a PG version of Joaquin Phoenix Joker. <laughs> Every and everyone saw it. Like nobody missed that point. Like it was obvious to everyone. Which kind of mi kind of missed the point. Kind of missed the point of that film by doing that. Because yeah, and <laughs> Arthur Fleck is not a hero. No. But then there was the other big point. When it was revealed that the reason why Cruella had such a hatred for Dalmatian is just because two of them killed her mother. Which is lame with a ca with a capital L so high it's fly it's flying up it's flying above it's flying above Maple Leaf Gardens. And so doesn't even make any fucking sense. Cuz I don't want to watch it now. I, no, it, it was legitimately on my on my watch list, but now that I know that's in there, I I'm going to give it the hard pass. You you have dodged a bullet, sir. As have I. Thank I you. just saw clips. I'm, I saw clips of it on on social media. So I was like, nope, that's it. I'm done. I am so grateful because <laughs> I, you just saved two hours of my life that I'm not going to throw in the garbage. Yeah, same, same. But yeah, and also it doesn't even make any sense. No, Corella Deville did not have ever have a hatred specifically on Dalmatians. The only reason she wanted to kidnap Dalmatians was because she liked the cut, the, the the fur they could give. He it was, was all about making a fur coat. She was like Dennis Rodman. She wanted to stick out. You know, have that fur yeah. coat and stick out because it's unique. You see stripes on fur coats. You don't see dots. Yeah, that was the entire point. There was never any implication in any other sort of material that said that, oh, she hated Dal Nations because they killed her mother. And so that's what we call a retcon. Very, very much. And it's, and retcons, ha retcons have a very, have a very, are a very risky gamble at the best of times. But yeah, the big the big reason why, as why as time has gone on, those those two kind of films have left a bad taste in my mouth is what the is what they represent. This i this idea of this idea of trying of trying to of trying to of trying to say that of taking the wrong lessons from from sympathetic villains like say Magneto, um. And try, and trying trying to use that to to rationalize them as be as being the as being actual heroes. Um. Actually, I think I know where this started. Because it wasn't Disney that started this. Where do you think this kind of thing started? Anyone remember a little old musical called Wicked? Yes. I'd say if there, if it's not the starting point, it's very damn close. Because it, it was a good one, but that's where this trend started, turning the Wicked Witch of the West into a more sympathetic character. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is there is truth to the adage that the villain is the hero of their own story. But, but... Some writers have gone way too. Some writers have gone way too far on that, and tr and tried and tried to make the tried to make the tried to justify the horrible act that a villain ta takes because of some greater good or greater cause. When the whole when the whole point the whole point of of that kind of that kind of character is while they may be sympathetic, their meth their methods are anything but. Um. This is the reason why you why I use Magneto on this on this kind of thing because his reasonings for do, his reasonings for establishing the brotherhood and everything that he does is 
uh, is completely understandable, especially given his history of being a Holocaust survivor. But his me but his methods are anything are anything but sympathetic. It's an explanation, not a justification. That is the whole point. Mm -hmm. And I, we've seen this everywhere. Hell, even in my, even in Toku, I've we've seen this. Rancic. Has to be Dido. Yeah, D I'll go. With, I'll go with Dido. That the, the whole Eternal movie was a whole point, like trying to because he was such a hot character. They tried to give him a backstory, and it completely shot that backstory down because, like, well, then what? In, what caused him to go from that to full on Psycho? And truth be truth be told, um. In the case, in the case of somebody, in the case of somebody like somebody like um, Dido, if you, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that give that giving him a backstory is is a ba is a bad idea, but truth, but truth be told, if you're gonna do that, then it should be written like a tragedy, not a triumph. A yeah. backstory, for, a backstory for Dido should be written, le should be written like. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying exactly like this, but but something that comes to mind is the heart of darkness. Somebody who some the whole the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It's special. Instead, instead of instead of trying instead of trying to say that he was a good guy because he ha because he helped these people out a long a long ass time ago. But when it com when it comes to getting back to getting back to the whole thing of of trying to do animation into live action before we went before we veered off like that, um, <laughs> with a, again the again there's the whole thing with exa with exa with exaggeration and and seeing seeing the kind of things that you can't do with actual people in um and in animation. And this is a this is especially the case with any with a lot of those Disney Renaissance um, projects that have been adapted in the last few years, because are 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 you guys familiar with the concept of, of animating on ones versus animating on twos? I don't think I've heard that before. Um, I am not. the The idea is the idea is how many how many unique how many unique illustrations. Per I I was I can't remember if it was per second or per frame. Um, so a lot of a lot of Disney films are animated on ones, and a lot of a lot of the high, a lot of the high budget um, anime films, the ones that are usually put out by G Kids, the Criterion of anime, um, are animated on ones, because you have one you have one unique illustration for each for, for each frame of animation. Animating on twos is when you ha is when you have one unique illustration per two frames. Um, a lot of TV anime falls into this category. Um, threes that would be your flash animation or your, or your anime that's meant that's meant to look like a flash animation. Hi, Pop Team Epic. <laughs> and hi, and hi, Inferno Cop. You are two big offenders on this regard. I love you, but you, but I but I would hesitate to call a lot of what you do animation. <laughs> um. Although at the very least, Pop Team Epic is a grit is a great anti drug argument. <laughs> no, that that and it's that and it's a good scavenger hunt when when watching either the dub or the sub. <laughs> but. When, but when it comes to when, it, and when it comes when it comes to trying to do that in live action, you're losing the kind of detail that you could have. Um, since we brought up Beauty and the Beast, I'll use that as an example. One of the things that impressed me as some as somebody who has a passing interest in animation is the is the ballroom scene and how detailed that was. And that then, as I got older, I started seeing these little videos. Of, that sh that showed the um, reference how they used real people as references for say the Little Mermaid. Um, and you can't you can't really you can't really show that le that level of detail because 
if you show a ballroom in li in live action, well, it's just a it's just a ballroom that's either a set or a, or a castle that you, or a castle that you rent that you rented out for the week. You do it in animation, and you and you don't have that kind of restriction. Um, that does that does tie into one of the things with the live action Beauty and the Beast that left a bad taste in my mouth. So in that live action version, Belle's dress is fucking ugly. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, d d d a little bit. I mean, I can see what they were trying to do with it, but it it was a little... I don't know, I, ask me on a different day and then you might get a different answer kind of thing, you know? Um, I have, I have seen, I've seen people cosplay Belle's, Belle's dress, um, in and, in and out of various conventions for years. And a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people I know who ended up getting into fashion, what they credit that dress as one of their inspirations when they were kids. But the reason that they went with that, with that, pl with that plain canary yellow shit was, um, the, was the actress involved felt felt that felt that going going with a, going with an open back dress would be disempowering. And when I heard about that, I was like, why wasn't she fired? Because you're you're basically ask, you're basically asking the the costuming crew to cater to cater to you last second like that. It's just it's a it's a really it's a really bad showing. Of course, there's also the possibility that they just wanted to play cheap. I can go either way on that front. <laughs> yeah. Um. But when when it comes now some now some of you had. To, some of you had talked about um, about anime that that you wouldn't mind seeing in live action. The big one for me that I think would be would be ninety percent foolproof, and I don't know if it's actually been done yet. Is Akagi? You know how Hikaru no Go is largely about it is largely themed around um, the game of Go. Akagi is th is themed is themed around a ca around the underground style of Reach Mahjong, mm -hmm. and is it is doing this is it's that kind of setup of this is a, this is a this is a common game but with v dangerous stakes, you know, like season zero of Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh. Although not not as not as okay, season zero of Yu-Gi-Oh might have been a bad example, but you get my point. <laughs> We're not gonna we're not gonna have anybody playing a playing a game to be as silent as possible while someone's pouring alcohol. But I'd but I'd say I'd, I'd say I'd say one of the one of the other ma one of the other major reasons is I ironically enough something getting popular enough to get a live action adaptation by the time it by the time it comes out. You've already got an audience that's grandfathered into the animated version, so it, in a weird way, it's kind of a it's kind of a catch twenty two situation. Yeah, and I I'm actually uh, looking through all my older reviews to see which ones would make a good live action adaptation, and I got a couple of them that I might be interested in. You don't exactly sound confident. Well, I mean, there's there's no way to be 100% confident with any of them. I mean, hell, a race should have been a good one, and that's hit or miss. Her is decent, but the ending kind of fell flat. What about Psycho Pass? Eh, maybe. But a couple, couple of the ones that I've reviewed in the past uh, that have at least some semblance of a supernatural ability, but nothing that's going to be over the top and hard to animate mm -hmm. or hard to recreate. Rascal does not dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. I think seeing a live action version of that would be really interesting. And believe it or not, a trigger anime, Kisniver. I have not seen either of those, so could you get could you give me the skinny? Alright. With Bunny Girl Senpai, don't let the name fool you. It says nothing it, the, the only reason they call it that is because the first arc is about a girl who's is can his because the whole premise of Bunny Girl Senpai as a whole series is that teenage uh, pu uh, puberty, the stress of puberty causes supernatural effects. 
it's kind of similar to the Monogatari franchise, if anyone has ever seen that. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot less over-the-top insane. But the whole idea is this guy goes and talks and helps these different girls who have supernatural effects caused by their stresses of their lives. For example, the first arc, the titular bunny girl senpai is an actress who wanted to get away from the limelight. And now the world has basically shifted to make it so that she doesn't, she almost doesn't exist. Nobody can even see her. And if they don't fix it soon, she will truly cease to exist. Again, you don't need you don't have to do much kind of CG with that. In fact, very not almost none of them require any CG. So that works out really well, easy to replicate. Kiss Niver, on the other hand is about a uh, a town a, a, a mysterious town where that has been used as a science experiment. And the biggest one is where these seven kids are forced to have their emotions uh, their pain linked to each other. Basically, if one of them gets hurt, all of them feel it. Mm. One of you gets whacked upside the head. All seven of you are suddenly grabbing the back of your head going, ow! And it goes beyond there. That was a little more complex, but I think it still could be pulled off in a live action setting. It's not too far removed from what someone would see in an episode of Twilight Zone, I'd say. Pretty mu- Yeah, I'd say it's on that level. Oh, oh, I just thought of another one. Let's get a classic one up in there. If you want, you guys want to do relive a classic, Paranoia Agent. <laughs> Prep for drugs. <laughs> Let's see you try to recruit. No, actually, I think that might be a little too much. Like, especially at the end, I don't know if you could replicate that. Um, I think you could do the first half of it, but once you start really getting into the crazy shit, that's when it starts to get a little hard to do. I would, I would argue. I'd say it would be. Do- I'd say that would be one of the rare cases where you could CG some of that up and still have it be doable, Lar- largely be- largely because you're de- largely because you're dealing with um, you're dealing with the, uh, the with people san- with people's sanity kind of breaking kind of breaking down. Mm. Um. Like the a CG version of monstrous little sl- little slugger wouldn't be wouldn't be um. Wouldn't wouldn't be as out of place, I I'll say. Now gr- now grant now granted uh, granted some of the some of the other bits of cr- some of the other bits of crazy and some of the asides would would certainly um certainly certainly be a bit of an issue, especially some of the one offs that are tangentially involved with Little Slugger. You'd have to do a whole lot of fat trimming, but since since it's only um. I believe it was only thirteen episodes. There's not a whole lot of there's not a whole lot of legwork you'd need to do. Yeah, you could probably trim out a few of the the center episodes, like the the three go the three uh, ghosts, the three suicide attempts. Mm-hmm. I think you could cut that episode out and completely out of the story, and you probably would lose nothing. That and the the gossip girl episode. I think you get rid of that one and lose nothing. Yeah, I'd I'd say I'd say the. I'd say the the one thing that would probably be hurt by doing by doing a live action is the is the um story with the cops. Especially, I think the hardest thing that would be that you'd have to cut because you would be almost impossible to recreate, and yet it's kind of essential, is when they're interrogating the, the fake little slugger. Yeah, that whole RPG fantasy setting thing that might be tricky. That would be some. That would be something that you could pro. You could probably. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say cut it out, but you could probably trim it down into just being a montage. It would. It would. It would still. It would still be pushing the line, but it. But it wouldn't be egregious. Yeah. Um. Now. When it can, now um when it comes to. In my in my in in my opinion in my opinion, um, I do think I think I think Paranoia Agent is the closest when it comes to a classic that you could really you could really adapt and pull into live action and pull it off because a lot of the other anime that are considered classics are t- are too are too le- are too left of the dial to work. Um, yeah. Like remember, remember, remember when we did the whole thing on space westerns? All three of them are major offenders. 
Yes. And yet one of them is getting adapted anyway. Yeah, yeah. one of them's getting adapted anyway. That's what. <laughs> and it's and ba based on the based on the. Dang it, um, shades. <laughs> Based on based on the based on the based on the uh, casting descriptions, I have absolutely no faith in it. As I've as I've mentioned beforehand, um, yeah. The, but um, when it but, can you but can you honestly see anybody pulling off Outlaw Star or Trigun? No. Oh, I can't no. see anybody pulling off Gundam. To be honest with you. There's that been... one's getting a live action. That one's getting another live action adaptation too. We already, uh, we already, had, we already had an attempt at, at a live action gu Gundam. Don't you guys? Didn't you guys remember G Savior? I was trying to forget about it, you son of a bitch. Thanks for the reminder, asshole. Um, I know that I know that there's been talk. I know that Harmony Gold has been trying to push hard for that live action um, Robotech, but I think that's dead in the water, especially when. It seemed like they had a writer for the project, and then he fucked off to go do Kingsman Two. Which... Probably a better choice than his, after after uh, how well that went. Plus... So, um, I think after we finish this point, I would love to bring out some honorable mentions. By the way, honorable or dishonorable? Uh, I in my opinion, honorable. But I'm going to say this: I think you guys will disagree, but. Let's let let's let's find out. So, oh. let let me. I want to I want to hear the rest of your point though, because you guys are talking about stuff that I'm just like, I'm gonna add this. I'm gonna add this to my list. I'm gonna add this. <laughs> like you're making my watch list longer. Oh oh oh! oh you you really <laughs> want to make? Oh, okay okay okay. You really want to have a long watch list here? I'm gonna DM a link to my channel. <laughs> sub for sub, Enjoy, bro. sir. <laughs> so, you know, sub for sub, bro. <laughs> You know, if there's if there's one thing that um, I remember, I remember when I remember when I asked everybody to do that to do that reflection thing when we when we went past a thousand, um, and I and Doku had said that he that he always learns something fr new from from being in the temple. Um, this is just another version of that, and you're not the only person who's got who's gotten an expanding list from being on because the same thing happened. The same thing happens with Doku when he's not late and gay. And the same thing <laughs> happens with Ash, who has super gay, who has a who has a li who has a list that he calls the research pile that I keep adding every time I t every time I talk with him. So all all I can say is, welcome to welcome to how we do things here. <laughs> but I don't mean to be a stick in the mud. Um, but I am going to have to bounce out about twelve fifteen. Uh, I got stuff I got to do, uh, but all right, no, no worries, man. But I want to say this, um, and I say honorable mentions because I know we've been talking about anime to live action, but I'm I'm very shocked that I have not heard one of these titles that I've mentioned. There's three of them, I, and and one of them hasn't been talked about yet. I'm very shocked actually because not only is it is a video game franchise, but it also is an anime franchise too. Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Very shocked. So, uh, what do you I, think about that? I don't. Con I consider. Po I have always considered Pokemon to be a video game franchise first. Yeah. Well, that's where it started, and then it turned into an anime, um, kind of thing. Yeah, but the anime is strictly is strictly an advertising platform. It is there to sell mm -hmm. you the game. So. To really call the anime its own thing, especially with how directly tied it is with whatever game is out at the time, like whatever season of the anime is out is currently airing is usually tied to whatever game is currently out, out of the uh, at that moment. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm kind of with the monk on this one. The, the the thing that I say about it is too, and this is kind of my category on it. Um, just to give you the short rundown of it. The anime is different just a tad bit because it's not following the main hero, which is red and red and blue. I'm going to keep it red and blue. That way it's not confusing anybody. So we'll just keep it strictly at red and blue. Um, it's it's following, uh, not following red. It's following a different person named Ash, who a lot of people mistaken that as red as the main hero, but it actually is not. I'm it well, is a different me, person I'm entirely. I'm well aware of the difference between the two. In fact, they did a separate adaptation at one point that was following red 
mm-hmm. instead of Ash. And yeah, but again, even if they aren't loose, even if they aren't directly connected to each other, again, a lot of the storylines tend to follow what's going on in the games. A lot of the characters come from the games. Mm-hmm. Like, there's very mm-hmm. little about it that doesn't connect to the games in some capacity mm-hmm. because the whole point is it's an advertising vehicle. Well, That's building cool. up from that point, too, um, you know, Detective Pikachu took a different art completely, though. It, it had none of the original characters in it, actually. Um, just the Pokemon, right? So, in my opinion, I thought Detective Pikachu was actually a good movie. I know a lot of people in the choir will probably disagree with me on that, actually, but I thought it was that, a good no. movie. I, in terms of, as a as its own movie, and, and as a Pokemon movie, no, I loved the shit out of Detective Pikachu. I thought it was a fantastic movie. Yep. There is there is one other thing that you that you that you're kind of that you're kind of overlooking when it comes to bringing up Detective Pikachu. And that that is the fact that it that it is that it was coming after that it was coming after a game of the same name. Which, yeah, I, since I recall. Since we're, since we're focusing on um, the anime to live action dichotomy, it's disqualified. Oh, okay, okay. If we were well, that would disqualify Dynasty Warriors then too, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, well, that that qualif- that disqualifies it in t- in two ways because it's e- because. There's of, there's of course the games and there, there's the, there's the fact that it's still based on Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Mm-hmm. One of the, one of the one of the four pillars of of heaven when it comes to wuxia fiction. And that's why I wanted to say it was an honorable mention, um, because I I had a feeling in my gut that a hey, you know this probably isn't you know what we were talking about, but to kind of branch those two together. It's literally the other side of the anime industry coming up with like gaming projects like that. Like even if it from gaming project to anime to anime to real life movie, it's literally like the other side of it. And that's that's what's really cool about it because I think the two should combine together and learn from each other's not only mistakes, but also build upon what they do very well. As much as much as I as much as I do agree do agree with that, there is there is one um, there there is one there is one little there is one little issue, and that's the fact that the in a lot in a lot of companies what would be considered the anime division, what would be considered the vi- the live action or video game or whatever division, they are in isolation from each other. It's not a whole the the closest that we get to any sort of cro- any sort of crossover. Staff wise is somebody being brought on as a consultant, which um that may that may sound like it's a big deal, but in actual context, not really. It's it's the equivalent of being it's the equivalent of saying that you're the executive producer. All that it, all that it means is that you're is that you're a na- is that you're a name on the credits, um. <laughs> much much in the same way that being a. Pro- Saying being a um, producer on a vi- on a video, being having the producer role on a video game, doesn't mean a whole lot in practice. It's like shake and bake, and I helped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I I actually wanted y'all's thoughts on that to you. Um, I greatly appreciate it. So before I decide to gracefully bow out of the monastery, mm-hmm. I need I need a top three. From both of you, a top three. Hey, you have to watch this live action anime movie. As my friend, I need a top three from both of you. So, what should I watch? Oh, that's hard. Um, well, I'll let you go first on this, Shades. All right. Um, I'd say right off the bat, I met, we mentioned the Death Note movies, definitely high up on my list. The Rurouni Kenshin films, and shit, I just had one on top of my head. What was I thinking of? Fuck, I just had, I literally just had one on the top. Oh, Alita Battle Angel. All right, since he since he went with the uh, since he went with the serious legit ones, let me get let me give you the let me give you the crazy shit. <laughs> 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 okay. 
I'm not putting these as I'm not putting these as numbered, but these are just these are just three to look into. Same. Um, the live action Kashan. Just for how batshit it is. Um Second is the the second one I'm giving you is the is the live action Goemon. For similar levels of batshit. And Blade of the Immortal. Giving you three doses of crazy. He gave you the sa- he gave you the safe sane stuff. I give you the crazy shit. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> now I need one stinker. One st- one stinker. One stinker. Yep. Um, you want to go first again, Shades? Yeah, I'll let you have this one to start off. This is your territory. <laughs> 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 I did. This is. I want. I want it clear that I am equal parts sadist and masochist. But I know you. I know you very well, Mendro. Trust me. <laughs> like I, 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 this is why I'm asking you this because I want to see how much of a masochist you're going to be to me. <laughs> okay. 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 Since since you want since you wanted a, I would, I would bring up the live action Fist of the North Star. But since I don't know if I don't know if that's on a reliable means, and I don't want you to go through the hoops of getting it on eBay, that's off the table. Since 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 I can't since I can't go since I can't go with that. Um. You know what? Fuck you, Ricky O. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Shades, tell him nothing. Let him experience it the way we did. I had well, no intention of saying a fucking thing. <laughs> one more time on that name. Ricky O. Ricky O. Okay. R I K I dash O. You, I would, I wouldn't exactly call it a, I wouldn't exactly call it a stinker, but since, since apparently my role in this is to give you the crazy shit, you're getting the crazy shit. <laughs> Though, I think I got a crazy one too for for what I've got planned. Cause this one actually had a major star in it. I'm scared. You the should... live action adaptation of Kite. <laughs> <laughs> You made Mildred laugh I, like that. I, I I don't know if I want. I don't know now. You asked. Well, if it makes you. <laughs> you asked. Also, if it makes you feel any better, Sam Jackson did it. Yikes. <laughs> that that's even worse. Yep. You want have fun, <laughs> motherfucker. You wanted you wanted a stinker. You cannot you cannot complain to us that we didn't that we didn't deliver. <laughs> all right so here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna pick from this list I, uh, sadly i have to omit uh i have to uh omit death note because i've already seen it rip um unfortunately but the rest of them i actually have not so i think something be really cool is uh i may go ahead and do a follow-up video on this mm-hmm. and actually uh do a review on uh, three of them of, of this list, but one has to be a stinker. So what I will do is I will probably look into doing a fall video as time allows. And I think that'd be really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, I think that'd be, that should be a lot of fun. I, I, uh, y'all, y'all, thank you so much for like all your knowledge and stuff tonight. I, it kind of opened a new world up for me. Like I said, I'm in the video game universe. So, I mean, I, I'm in the anime just a tad bit. But like I'm not I'm not in the muck of it, you know. Well, check out the reviews I sent you. I check out the, I I don't I don't focus on the he- on the major stuff though. I've done some like popular anime. I focus on the obscure hidden gems. Mm-hmm. That's what I like too, actually. Then I think you'll like <clears throat> what I have to offer. But yeah, so I appreciate you guys having me in the temple. Um, is it okay if I do a plug here, Mildred, with your with yeah. your uh, with your yeah, graces? Go, yeah, go ahead. 
go ahead since the, since since your time's since your time's almost up. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um, stop you. Well, guys, we do uh, what's called the Bushido Squad. Um, it, I am a YouTube Let's Player and commentator. Uh, you can follow me at youtubecom slash Um Come join the Bushido Squad today. I would really appreciate you guys' support. Um, but yeah, come and have fun. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I want to thank you so much on behalf of the Bushido Squad for having me out today. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun, and I look forward to doing this again. Yeah, uh, by, by all means, drop by any time, man, because I, I enjoy talking with you. I did. I did too. It's great to see like different opinions that really I just you know don't you don't really have any knowledge of really and learning from that. And uh, yeah, I greatly appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All right, st stay for as we say around here, stay frosty, man. Stay frosty. But I think I think when I think when it comes down to the um idea the idea of adapting anime into um, live action. The, f I think it. I think what I think we've come down to the fact that th that the whole affair is full of is full of needles, but as much as it pains me to s as to say this, inroads and in and improvements have been made, even if it's only by inches. Yeah, I mean, I think eventually people, uh, the these producers, like the right producers, will come in, the right directors, the right staff, and they'll 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 find the winning formula to give us a whole slew of adaptations. But much like Hollywood here in the West, Japan's movie studios, they honestly don't care. They just want the quick buck. So until we can get to an equilibrium where we can, they can get that quick buck and still give us good content, which may still be a long way away, we must suffer through all of this trash. Although, although to be fair, give, given some of the stuff that we've covered, suffering is second nature to us. Uh, don't I know it, brother? <laughs> But with all with all that said, I think that will do it for this particular episode of of Geek Watch. Um, this ne the uh, while and while um while Valley of the Judged when it came to level up five E is done, there are there is one little loose end that I that I want to that I'm going to be tackling on on Wednesday. Along, along with, along with some, fo some follow-ups with, pre with people I've had on, the, I've had in the temple in the past, and one person who I, who I promised, I, who I promised would, get, would get a spot in when he did, when he relaunched his project. But until then, up, oh, hold on, monk. Oh, go ahead. I, normally I don't do this, but I need to plug something today. Go right ahead. So. For those who don't know, less, uh, while Monk was gone, I was also away at a little thing called MetroCon out in Tampa, Florida. And this Tuesday, and every Tuesday for the next several weeks, I will be hosting live premieres of the MetroCon stage shows. And if you guys have not seen what MetroCon offers on stage, I highly recommend you guys check this shit out because it is going to be insane. Starting this Tuesday, we're taking a look at the Metricon Fire Show. Yes, they do fire dances. And they did one based on Cyberpunk 2077. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, it has 100 times less glitches than the actual Cyberpunk 2077 at launch day. So, by sure, make sure that uh, I'll be posting that. I'll be hosting that over on the Metricon Facebook group. So, go look that up. And it'll be 8 p.m. this Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern this Tuesday. So check that out. All right. And of of course, now I will note that the the um, schedule that I have for the interviews is go is going as is going as follows. Tomorrow, Paleo Gaming is coming back since he's he's relaunched Omega Horizon and actually got it funded this time. He actually got it funded in 30 minutes. Um. SideQuest Pressed is going to be coming on Tuesday. Wednesday will be a bit of a will be a bit of a double feature. The big on one hand, Steve, um, Steve Dinehart the Fourth will be coming back. We'll be, we'll probably be talking more about more about Giant Lands and some of the crazy stuff he's been up to. Um, Thursday, um, Dave Silva of Metahumans Rising will be coming back because remember the 
um, the U the UA Great Lakes project. I uh, yeah. I approached I approached him with the idea of, hey, well, we'd just be building power sets, but what if I but what, what but how but I'd like to have you come back to talk about the power how the power sets of that class would convert into your game. So that that'll that'll certainly be an interesting little ex, little experiment. And Saturday, I will be have I'll be having the cr the creator of Shifting Tides, which is cur which is currently in development. So I'm keep so I'm keeping myself bu I'm keeping myself busy. And of course, there will be a new ge there will be a new Geek Watch on so on next Sunday. I did have I did have the topic locked in, but I may but I may be I may be changing that topic to something else simply because of timing. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs>